let's go over making videos and uh, not just making videos, but not spending any money while doing it. There's a lot of free software out there and there's a lot of things I wish I knew before I started making videos on YouTube and all these other platforms I make content for. And it's really important not to go and spend a ton of money. Uh, as I, when I started my channel, I didn't spend too much money, uh, although I did buy a lot of frivolous things that just weren't needed when it came to software. So in this video, I'm going over my entire uh, setup here. I don't use any paid software. I don't use Adobe, I don't use anything. I use completely all free and open source software for my entire production. Uh, that includes Twitch streams, that includes YouTube streams, video production, everything is done on free and open software. So with all that, let's get into it. I do live stream every Monday and Friday, so if you have a question for me, be sure and stop into my Twitch channel and ask me live. And if you'd like to check out these streams after the fact, you can always head over to Chris Titus Tech Streams and check out my entire archive over there. So right here on my actual OBS screen, you can kind of see it. Let me go ahead, pull up uh, this portion of it but I am using a Linux-based system to run all of my stuff, so I don't even pay for my operating system, this is all Linux, and I'm using OBS, uh, which is open broadcaster software. It's completely open source. You can get it and pretty use it on anything, so if you're on Mac, Windows, Linux, you can use this software. It's fantastic. You can see everything here. I went ahead and turned off preview as it does have a little bit of an inception effect in this regard, uh, but overall, this is a fantastic software to be using. Um, other big things I like to use is what's called Caden Live. So I'm actually gonna flip over to my main production PC where I do all my editing and show you that. So I'm gonna open up Caden Live here. This is really good production software. Uh, I know some people have issues with it. Sometimes it's a, uh, uh, can crash midway. So make sure you're saving often, but I don't really have this too much. I run a little bit of an older version of Caden live. If you go to here, uh, I'm running 1912.3 on this version. Uh, I do like 19.08 as well as another version. So I actually usually have two versions installed on my systems, depending on what I'm doing. Um, it, it depends on like my cuts and things like that, but Overall, this does the job for me. I've tried other pieces of software. If you don't want to use Caden Live, uh, by all means, I would try uh, OpenShot or uh, Shotcut, or you can even try DaVinci Resolve if you need a more professional setup with a lot of features. However, uh, for me, Caden Live does it. It's very simplistic, and if you're not a avid old school video editor, by all means, I would prefer probably Caden Live. It's probably the most user friendly out of all the ones I've had. There's another one out there that a lot of people like, and it's called Olive uh, Video Editor, which is also excellent. Uh, but overall, I still am stuck on Caden Live, and I still love it. Uh, I never really edited video prior to making YouTube. Uh, I initially started with Filmora and Adobe Premiere and some other paid software, but it kind of slowed me down because there was a lot of features and things I just didn't use and uh, Caden Live really does everything for me. So if you look back when I was using the more professional software or the paid software, uh, you'll notice my production quality was quite a bit less. Uh, it didn't very do a very good job because, well, I didn't have a lot of the equipment and things to go with it. Uh, and I was very new to editing as well. So if you're new to editing, Caden Live is just a easier entry point and something that I've just kind of stuck on as my channel has gone along and uh, I, I think I'm gonna just keep using it because if it ain't broke, why fix it? And it's free. So when it comes to audio, audio is the most important thing whenever you make any kind of video for any platform. If you have bad audio, well, you're gonna have a really, really tough time with audience retention. You have to have crisp, clear audio, more so than picture, way more so. You can mess up your picture, you can mess up your lighting, you can mess up a lot of things, but audio is something that no one's gonna forgive you for. So make sure your audio is crisp and clear. Try to kill all the background sound. If that means you gotta turn off your AC unit, like I do, I still have a little window AC unit that's uh, not far from me because I'm actually filming in my garage. And I'll show you the entire setup here in the garage in just a second. But uh, 
yeah, this right here is very important. Audacity is good for background noise reduction and other things. If you want to really dive deep and really manipulate your sound, by all means, Audacity is a great tool to have. However, I wanna show you another tool. So this right here is Audiophonic or auto I, I, whatever. It's, it's this right here. You can go to A-U-P-H-O-N-I-C.com. Go into here. They give you two hours free every single month. I have loved this. And it, honestly, I just kind of made this part of the production because it does so much for you. Let's go ahead and start a new production. Now, while this is free for the first two hours every month. So if you're only making a couple videos a month, you don't even need to pay for this service. However, for me, I kind of use it sporadically. So I just bought a block of 25 hours and just said, hey, uh, I think I paid like 50 bucks. And I usually use between two and three hours per month of the actual cost of that. So sometimes I'm not even dipping into my 25 hour allocation per month. And uh, I have little presets. So what I do is after I create my video, I just say preset YouTube, and then it kind of just sets everything for me. It does adaptive leveler, loudless normalization, filtering, noise and hum reduction. So if I have like a computer making a humming noise, it's gonna kill that in the background. Uh, and then it does a loudness target and it normalizes and makes all the loudness in my videos exactly the same. That's how when I'm coming in, uh, it's about a really pretty loud video, but it's not like uh, clipping and causing a lot of really bad things happening in the background. So uh, by default, this is usually set for podcasts and mobile at negative 16. However, I just thought that was a little too loud. Even, even though it's fine for what I was doing, I just felt like I needed to go one less to, to negative 18 loofs. And it seems like the perfect setup. So what I did is I just made this preset. And then after I make my videos, instead of going through Audacity and messing around and wasting probably 30 minutes to an hour of my time, I just pull this up, toss it up here, upload it, and then come back in about an hour, grab the finalized product, and then upload that to YouTube. They do have a YouTube uh, publishing right in here. I've tried it, and I kind of like to have that uh, control of actually uh, uploading it myself to YouTube because there's a lot of things that go into uh, thumbnail and SEO and just all the different things what happen on when you publish a video to YouTube that I kind of want that control. So I don't like the auto uh, upload service that they offer to YouTube. Uh, you could do this, but then you got to go back through and kind of do all those edits manually. And I really didn't want to mess with my workflow. So that's why I do it this method. But by all means, you could use the publishing and just edit the video after the fact. So with all that said, let's go in. I'm gonna actually switch cameras now and give you kind of just a tour of what it is. It's a little bit messy, but uh, forgive the mess uh, as I've kind of been busy lately. All right, so now that you know how I actually do my videos and you see the software portion of it, the hardware portion is a little different. Uh, I start and ingest everything with this box right here. Uh, this is about a five, $600 computer. Uh, I got a good sale on an AMD 2700 and motherboard for about $200. I put a NVIDIA 1660 for streaming and uh, that's about 250, so 450 all together. And then uh, the memory I think was 50 bucks, so 500. And then the capture card. I have a Magewell in here, which is really expensive, but really I probably would recommend a little USB capture device if you're doing any on-screen presentation. But that's my whole setup. Everything here works on Linux, Mac, and Windows, so I can pick any operating system. And then if we flip back over to here, you'll get to see my entire hardware setup. All this is kind of more professional or professional quality or semi-pro quality. Uh, this camera right here is actually just an M200. Uh, it's a cheap DSLR, but has a good lens on it. So I do pretty much all my filming on it and ingest it directly through a capture device. So I never actually am transferring from a camera to a computer. The computer is actually ingesting it real time. Uh, if you are doing that, make sure you sync audio video, uh, do a clap track, and then slow down the video to about 0.4% or uh, about 0.4x uh, playback speed. And then on that clap track, listen for the clap as your hands hit and you'll be able to match it up pretty easily. Uh, but for starting out, the big thing here, light boxes 
get some cheap light boxes. This one up here in the corner actually gives me the best light and it's the cheapest one. It is big and bulky, uh, but it is only like $40 on Amazon. This is an LED lamp. Uh, I don't like its light as much and it was a little more pricey. I think about $60 to $80 for the LED uh, one, but eh, pick your poison on that. Uh, audio, don't go with like an SMB, 7B or anything like that out of the gate. Go with a USB mic. Uh, I'll recommend a, another YouTube channel. His name's Pod castage and i learned a lot of my audio from him uh just absolutely fantastic so with that that's pretty much my basic setup here uh i know starting out i only had a webcam and a yeti mic i don't really recommend the yeti as there's cheaper solutions that sound better but uh you know whichever you're comfortable with you don't need to spend much money and definitely don't spend any money on the software side of things. But this is now my setup after doing this for almost two years. We're coming up on a two year anniversary in September that I've been uploading videos to YouTube. And that is using all free and open software and doing everything in uh, your system. So it's, it's really important as it's not exactly a full on switch. If you're already familiar with those paid software pieces, I would try and just slowly take out pieces of that and transition as I've done. When I first started, I was using pretty much all paid software and doing more traditional publishing. And I slowly switched everything out to the free and open source equivalent. And I'm telling you, I couldn't be happier. It is just a great, uh, fantastic production schedule. And honestly, uh, my workflows and productivity has gone way up since I've done this, which is kind of funny. But uh, then again, I don't have a lot of the whiz bang features that some people put in their videos. And uh, my, my advice to you is this, if you think you need those, by all means, sure, go for it. But for me, it's a uh, bloat. It, I need to focus more time in making good content for you and less time adding like some weird transition effect or some floating text or whatever it might be. People don't really care too much about that. They care about what you're saying and the content always comes first. And uh, just using these tools and using basic editing techniques is really all you need to know about creating videos. And this is my setup. So with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.